New York City and scores of other cities are largely known for their iconic skylines. But the future of many urban hubs, including the Big Apple, may be underground, as real estate suitable for infrastructure projects becomes more and more scarce. One such project underway in New York, the massive East Side Access Project, will link the Long Island Railroad to Grand Central Terminal, providing faster and easier access to the east side of Manhattan, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority says. East Side Access is a concept started in 1960s when a master plan was envisioned to bring the Long Island Railroad into Manhattan. But that vision was a long time in coming. The project was put on hold in part due to the economic turmoil of the 70s. It wasn't until the early 2000s that the design of the whole system finally began to take shape. To connect LIRR trains to Manhattan, the project would take advantage of a tunnel previously finished in 1989 that runs under the East River from Queens and enters Manhattan around 63rd Street. The project required construction of about eight miles worth of tunneling in Queens and Manhattan, while being careful not to cause too much disruption to the city above ground. Queens is the home of the Harold interlocking that carries uh, 750 plus train movements a day. Manhattan, we had to be under traffic under, under Metro North. The bulk of this subterranean expansion was possible thanks to massive machinery that can bore through rock and soil, marking a radical evolution from the tunneling methods used when the city's first subway lines were built in the early 1900s. If you look at our subway system, right, that is very shallow in New York, it was all cut and covered. That means they came from above, they dug a ditch, and they they put walls, and they put a topping, and then they, and here you are. The tunnel boring machines that started in the 50s change dramatically the safety and the speed and the efficiency of getting tunnels done. And depending on the quality of the rock, you can do 50, 60, 70, 100 feet a day. And the, you know, any scenario in the past, you couldn't have done that. Tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, are gigantic. The largest ones are about 850 feet in length. The TBMs used for the East Side Access Project were about 20 feet in diameter, the head itself weighing about 200 tons. Given the faster pace made possible by the TBMs, the Manhattan tunnels were dug between the fall of 2007 and fall of 2010, while in Queens, tunneling took place from January 2011 until July 2012. As the machine chewed away at the rock, one of the main challenges on the Manhattan side of the project was dealing with all of the debris. We brought all of the muck through the tunnels and brought it all the way into Queens. We had to move 1.5 million cubic yards of muck. After the TBM carved a path, controlled blasts cleared more space along the route. Then the tunnels had to be waterproofed and reinforced with concrete, which presented another logistical headache for engineers. Guess what? Concrete trucks do not come underground. So what we needed to do is to actually uh, have drop points in which trucks that are coming from, from concrete plants are coming there and we're pumping the concrete down into the hole and then into the proper location where it is needed. While many of the Manhattan tunnels still need to be lined with concrete, others are ready for tracks to be laid. Meanwhile, the softer ground in Queens presented a different set of complications when it came to tunneling. When you build in, in, in rock, like in Manhattan, it was the Manhattan schist, that's self-supporting. You really, yes, we do provide the support, we do put reinforcement, but in, in the whole, it's self-supporting. When you put dirt and you, you dig to dirt, it's not self-supporting. To get around this challenge, engineers used a different type of TBM capable of placing specially designed, prefabricated pieces of concrete along the tunnel walls as it advanced. Once completed, the new tunnels through Manhattan's Upper East Side will carry LIRR trains to these caverns, about 160 feet below street level at their lowest point. Projected to be finished in 2022, the three-level terminal will house four platforms on two levels, able to accommodate eight trains at a time. 47 escalators and 22 elevators will help carry passengers up to the Grand Central concourses. 
Day one, we'll have over 160,000 people that will, will come for the Long Island Railroad at the lower level. Today, uh, Grand Central is uh, servicing about 750,000 people. When we bring another 160, we'll be well over 900,000 daily passengers in Grand Central. Because this is, in effect, the next Grand Central. 